Right, on to the next part. Apologies for the gap being massive. I've had a lot on. I'll just leave it there. Okay, from the last video then. The, uh, the only difference with this is I've took off the experimental gubbins and put it back on, but with 0.3mm wire instead of 045 so it's not quite as stiff as it was. Um, also, the prongs that are pointing downwards, I've put like a little, I think it's fossil bronze paddle on the end. So it just, you know, it just works better. But it also gives it more electrical contact, it's more reliable. Um, right then, coupling rods. If you buy the coupling rods from the SCC shop, they're going to come like this. If they were focus. Okay, these are the larger bosses, which is basically these bits. You get them in two sizes, but I find these look better and these work better with Alan Gibson um, crank pins, which is why I made them. Now this is brass, obviously, and coupling rods aren't usually brass. I can't get them to print in steel for bounding box issues so what I tend to do is once you ream the holes out put solder on the top of it I hate this focusing problem right which in effect paints it the correct colour okay I'll show you how to do that in a minute so just to um, be sure these crank pins are threaded with Alan Gibson's. You have to put the brush things on. They screw on. And that means they've 1.5mm fat, so you want you know 1.5 and maybe a tweak clearance for these holes. So basically drill the holes out little and often. Just keep testing it. And also, you notice one side. It's flush, and in the side, the boss is more pronounced. So you want to light this way, ideally, so you don't bend it. If you do it in the wood, you can feel when you're in. What I've done is rather than going for the drill size that's 1.5 mil, you go for a bit smaller and you just build up. If you want you can use those tapered brooches as well. That's been awkward to come out. I find it easy to take the top off. Trying to slide it and get them to fall out is asking too much about the time. That's how they're supposed to be, but they're not always that easy. Everything's changing.
Oh, come on. You want to stick out as least as you can get away with. That way there's less chance you're going to break it. Then we're going to thread one of these on, the crank pin. It's very difficult to show you, especially with this, this uh, non-focusing thing, it's awkward. Yeah, whatever. I don't know how to show you in this way, but you just thread it on. So It should go straight on. This doesn't need to be threaded, but the, the retainer does. Now this, I'll give it the right colour soon, because it should go on okay. If it doesn't go on, you need to open it out a little bit more. You see that it's not on properly. Let's focus, let me get some of those. Right, so we need to basically open those holes out just a wee bit more. Rather than going up a size, I tend to use the same size and just spin it at a slight angle. Probably not the best engineering practice, but I find it seems to work okay without it being a problem. You want to paint your rod with flux all over. I would have done this beforehand, which means I'll have to check the holes again, but never mind. Should just paint your rods with the solder. Use a one four five like I have been.
Right, let's give that a few minutes. Yeah, it's okay. Right. The colour. Well, it's a bit blobby. You must notice a slight bend in it as well. It wasn't there before, so you just gently ease it out. It's supposed to be a bow, a slight bow on the top and a bigger one. So a slight bow on the bottom and a big one on the top. But when you handle it, if you bend it, just gently tease it back into shape. And uh, You don't want to take all the solder off, you just want to smooth it off. You just want to get the lumps out. If there's a little bit of a brassy colour shine through, you can always go over it again, or just leave it and pretend it's a bit of oil. Or if you want to add a bit of paint to it, that's up to you, but I find this gives it that steel sort of colour. I hope you agree that looks a lot better than just brass. Well, that should be. All right. So let's put this away. Okay, now that's on, you just use a little retainers. It's no different really than a screw, it's just so small and fiddly. Sausage fingers don't help. It's probably told you can get that, you do it properly, but. I don't know about it. There you go, when you drop them, it happens all the time. It's on. Now, that should stay done up, but sometimes, quite often, they don't, so you can probably use a little blob of Loctite, a little blob of super glue, a blob of paint. They usually find a bit of thick paint, or maybe the teeniest bit of super glue usually helps. And when it's done, okay, you can file it back. Or what you can do is, if you want to, you can even solder it. Make sure you don't solder the actual rod. That's more risky, so probably not the best thing, but you want to file that edge off afterwards. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Put the other one on. Right. Now they're both on. Okay. Well, like I said earlier, I tend to retain these, so. Quick test. To get chassis running, you normally have to hone them, but just let's see what's going to happen. At the moment, I need to put some weight on it. Now, ideally, when you put weight in the loco body and in the chassis, you want the weight where the drive is, but you're also going to have some. In the front to balance it out and also make sure you, your bogies give electrical contact so maybe just there for now a little bit teeny bit of binding that's probably because one side is a little stiffer than the other but this, this 
it's pretty much normal when you're building kits, you have to investigate stuff. Plus, the fact that it's spinning means there's no weight on the back. Temporarily, I could do with making a cradle. That's just not going to cut it, I don't think, balancing it on top. So as you can see it works but it needs honing. This is pretty much normal. Right. On the whole I'm pretty pleased with that. As a first start, that's pretty good. Now this, I don't know if you can show you because the angle. Yeah, I'm focus. I don't know if you can see, there's a little bit of play in that. Then you have to match the amount that you've reamed it out, you need to match it. Because there's all sorts of different things that can cause binding and dodgy running. And the trick is getting everything in combination. So that's this part done. I said that I was going to show you how to do it on these. Rather than showing you, I'm just going to explain because it's a lot it's it's even more simple. Well, you got your crank pin here. There. All you would do is, instead of putting a bush on, you put the coupling rod directly onto your crank pin. This is the Markets forward slash uh, Romford system. Okay. Then you get a piece of paper, just normal A4 paper. Get your, get a blade, just point a little hole in it, twizzle it a teeny bit so you've got the small pin prick hole. And pull it over the top to make a paper washer. Then you get one of the small washers that Markets can supply you, designed with these, and you put that on the top. Then you just put a bit of flux on, a bit of solder, and that should be it. It should cap that should be enough to capture it. When you then pull out the paper washer, the thickness of the washer will stop. Um, well, the washer itself stops the solder going, going all the way through, but the thickness of it will give you just that bit of clearance. So depends what you find easier. That's a bit of a fiddle getting them on and off, but they, these are better for maintenance because you can easily take things off, replace the bushes, and get to them easier. So I hope that's been informative. I'm now going to hone that. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes troubleshooting. One thing I've had to do is move the contacts because they're catching on the uh, check rails. Another thing I had to do is this axle here was popping through ever so slightly, so it was catching on here occasionally. That was causing some binding. The other thing is the nuts were too tight, and so I've undone them to give a little bit of clearance, and now I'll have to fix them. But I've put a weight here, which will simulate the weight being in the firebox area, and a little bit of weight at the front, and it's not too bad. There's no oil on it yet, so... It's gone past the second radius um, apex. So that, considering I've just pretty much done it in front of you the first time, and then 15 minutes troubleshooting, that's not bad. Just need to fix the crank pin nuts, and then good to go.